Welcome to Use It in a Sentence, your elementary school contest of Do You Know Your Words? it is is that it like is it something you put on your table to i know i was thinking it was something you put your hot things on but i think that's a trivet trivet a swivel trivet a swivet is a state state of nervous excitement haste or anxiety flutter Flutter. that that i meant i guess i'm in a swivet let's look in a swivet or in such a swivet it's an American colloquialism of unknown origin, first appearing in 1890 in the Vermont Journal. On the night of their 10th anniversary, he'd been in such a swivet about what to give her that he locked himself in his bedroom trying to choose the right gift. That was probably her gift. Here in the valley of my mid fifties, I try not to get into a swivet over my occasionally faulty memory. Okay, swivet. Mm-hmm. We're gonna so we'll do thirty minutes thinking of stories. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, house sitting my my best friend's house growing up, and <clears throat> their house uh, there weren't any windows along the side. I guess they were in the bedrooms, but you base the front of the, you, you drove up to the house. I don't know which way to show you drove up to the house and it's just the garage and yeah. there, there are no windows. Yeah. And then it's really the back of the house is where the, they had a plate glass window that looked out over their yard. Yeah. And you couldn't really see a lot outside the side of the house either. So they had a, a Labrador, a sweet Labrador. And so, you know, I was in high school and going to watch movies and I probably bought a bunch of frozen pizza and I'm going to be with the dog whom I loved yeah. and it's just getting dark or it's it's dark and it's just getting ready time to go to bed I, I I think I took the dog out and I'm in the kitchen just kind of turning the lights off and I I hear this running <gasps> outside and um, they had they had like gravel uh, walkways on either side of the house and I hear this running the footsteps <gasps> And um, they had motion sensor lights in their backyard and the lights went on and I see this guy run through the backyard. And I was like, oh shit. And all of a sudden I hear more footsteps. Then the lights go out. Oh my. They, they should have stayed on longer, oh. but they went out and they came back on and there were five guys just beating the crap out of this guy. In the backyard? in the backyard and the the lights were flickering. And so I get on the, I, and and the dog wasn't barking. Yeah. I called, I I got on the phone. The dog was not barking. No, I got on the phone and they, I think this was pre cordless phone or maybe I was just scared. So I wasn't up by the window and I called 911 and I explained what, what was happening. And then I, I went back out and I looked and I could see some people sort of running around. And then I heard footsteps running uh, oh, back right. along the side of the of the driveway, or the, the side of the house. Nobody's other cops arrived and there was nobody there. They left. Oh. It was creepy. I, you know, just not being able to see out. I mean, I'd been over the house hundreds of times, but. Right hearing that at night hearing and then seeing this guy run through the yard he went one way then the other the lights went out it came back on and there was like four guys doing that I don't think the lights went out at that point I probably ran to the phone (laughs) so they seemed to go out yeah they seemed to go out I mean and all I realize a lot of our stories we always say they're pre-cell phone this was definitely pre-cell phone so I didn't run to the in back into the kitchen that's your only option right is yeah. i mean you, you can't video it you can't wa- keep watching and you, but also you know i've been watching way too many murder documentary they I, I even we gosh we watched what was it us 
Oh God, the ha- being in a house. Oh, in that the, movie. In the house, and they hear something, and they're we looking are at- Americans. <laughs> Oh, when one of the, I don't know if I have the line right, but one of the scariest movie lines I've ever heard is there's a family in the driveway. There's a family in our driveway. He said, there's a family in the driveway. I went, ah! It's probably the neighbors. But y'all scared of a family? We rewatched the scene with Elizabeth Moss. Oh, no. And Call her husband. And the twins are upstairs. And and they're just being you know privileged jerks. Yeah. But that but and the lights are on and and he she keeps saying there's something. Well, you just look, but they're having this power thing, mm-hmm. and so he goes, yeah. There's an, and he gets another drink, and then the family's in there with. The, oh, God. This is what I'm thinking of when you've got footsteps running around the side. That's a good, that's a good point. One of the scariest things about that movie was just being in a house. What's going on in the house? What's going on outside the house? And of course, you know, I freaked myself out watching horror movies growing up and stuff around the house. I knew my friend's parents' house, but I don't think I'd really thought of it as you can't see out. Can't see. And Uh I'm there by myself in high school and. Right. And, you know, it's like, what? There was there was footprints in the grass. There was no oh. blood. There was no body. There was no. So I'm assuming the guy being pursued got away, and then yeah. maybe the other people saw the lights come on and they got out of there. Right. Ugh. This was pre cell phone, and it was when you had a phone that was attached to the wall, and then you could have lines upstairs that were on the same line right so i was home by myself never a good start to a story never a good start to a story there's a family in the driveway and i was home by myself there's a family in our driveway pre-cell phone (laughs) and we're talking about swivets okay right yeah the word of the day isn't uh uh, comfort or equilibrium or you know <laughs> ambivalence we're right. in swivets or nostalgia yeah yeah okay so I'm talking to my friend because my you know parents are gone and it, it, it's like nine nine maybe ten o'clock at night and so I'm sitting downstairs in the kitchen on the phone and we're just yakking and we hear a click. Somebody else has been listening <sighs> to our. Oh phone. shit! I know what that click sounds like. Yeah, and I said, "Trisha, is somebody? Is your brother home? Was he listening in on the other line?" She goes, "Lauren, no, he's not here. There's nobody here." She goes, get out of there. Like that movie. She yelled at me, get out of there. So I go, Jesus Christ. And I run out of the house. In my bare feet, I run across the street. (laughs) I'm pounding on the door. (laughs) Your your, your stories have a lot to do with running for help. (laughs) one to face the the enemy i'm not i'm not i'm like i need help here me either and so i'm running across the street pounding on the door and mr smith who is a well-known lawyer in austin texas comes to the door in his t-shirt and boxers and he's not a good scene no they were all in bed i say there's somebody in my house there's somebody upstairs in my house (laughs) Okay. And he grabs a wrench and he doesn't put anything on. Here we go. <laughs> I, you know, I'm in my pajamas running barefoot. So is he. I think maybe he put flip flops on. We run back across the street. And he goes, Well, where are they? And I said, Well, they were upstairs. They're on the phone upstairs. He goes, Okay, let's go. So we go upstairs. And he goes, You go first. <laughs> Why did he do that? <laughs> So I run up the stairs because he doesn't know, 
you know, the house either. So I run up the stairs and I take a right long hallway all the way down this like Hitchcockian hallway Ew. because my, that's where my parents' bedroom was, where the other phone was. And so we run in there and I turn on the lights and there's nobody in there. And I go, the bathroom, the closet. Because <laughs> you, you have phones in there. The oh, bathtub. Oh, hiding. The bathtub. Oh, I, and I, I, the scariest moment of my life when I grabbed the shower curtain and threw it open. And there was nobody anywhere up there. There never ended up being anybody. But what we decided was the murderer had run out of the house while I was waiting for Mr. Smith to get his wrench. Do you think there was somebody in the house? No. It was just a, an, an audible click? I, it was an audible click. And as I'm telling this story now, no. 40 years later, I'm thinking Trisha probably, you know, she, she would play that. She could have done that on purpose. She might have. Trisha. Trisha. She was a naughty girl. She was great. But, but I could see how, I mean, and there was that, there was, what's that movie where, you know, there's the sound and then she calls the cops and they're like, it's coming from inside your house. Exactly. (laughs) Which wouldn't be scary now with cell phones, but oh my God. That's not even a trope anymore in the movies. You know, I think there's that thing about us, the movie us. Yeah. Talk about a trope. It's like that vulnerability of being in a being at home by yourself yes. and something out there that you can't see that and, I thought he captured so well in that film. Yeah, and it and there's something like they can see in and you can't see out because the lights yeah. are on, you know, and, and, and you're trapped somewhat in this house. Usually we think of our homes as a safe place to be. Right, I should um, run inside, close the door. It's a refuge, yeah. I mean, that's but, what I was thinking. It's like, what is going on in the backyard? Seeing that one figure and then the light flipped off and came back on and these fists. I mean, it looked like something out of a movie, you know, and I couldn't really see any faces. Like, of, Cause yeah. I was, it's, I was, it's a second, you know, two story house. And I was up, up looking down at just these figures. Oh my God. That and then really frightening. And I, and yeah, and on the phone hearing the foot footsteps running back down along the side of the house. And I'm like, are they going to try to get in the front door? Are they escaping? Right, right. Oh, yeah. my God. Wow. Okay. That's a swivet. We grew up in this one neighborhood. So we had these lovely neighbors, uh, like my best friend Jimbo and his family, and Shirley and Dick are the parents. Later, my parents moved. Um, and they were going to be out of town and ask, once again, house sitting, ask Shirley if she could, uh, you know, feed our dog every so often. Once a every day. Every so often? <laughs> I mean, I mean I, it was that she wasn't staying there. She, she'd drive over, feed the dog and leave. Yeah. Every day. Every, it was every day, maybe twice a day. Okay, okay great. I, maybe it wasn't that long. I, I don't remember that part. But UV, UV, Y-U-V-I was the name of our dog. Okay. Very sweet. Oh. We teased their family. They teased ours because they had cats and we had a dog. And nice. our families wouldn't understand the other animal. But she <laughs> loved Yuvi and Yuvi loved her. But we kept his kibble in a glass jar. Somehow, Shirley's feeding him, probably sets the jar down by accident, and Yuvi gets his head in the jar and then can't get it, <laughs> can't get his head out. And so, and he's going. <laughs> And Shirley's pulling on the jar and the, you know, the kibbles are going around like a gumball machine and Shirley's pulling. So I think she hits it and it breaks and then has this like medieval band of jar of, of shards of glass. And she's like, <laughs> talk about a swim it. So she, and he's all excited. It's just Shirley and excitement, I'm but she's worried he's gonna cut his head off. God. <laughs> She gets this towel, you know, and she's weaving it around and trying to calm him down. And then she gets on the phone, pre-cell phone. Right. I think all our- They all are pre-cell. That's the problem. 
she calls her husband because he's going to need to get wire because the you know the metal part of the lid oh. or, or, the, or the, there's like metal the around yep and she wanted to get some wire cutters and she's like Richard I'm down at the Jacobson's get over here you got his head in the jar and it broke and now there's jags of glass everywhere and I, you need to bring your wire cutters you need to get down and write it quick and he said who is this She's like, she's a very kind woman, but I think she's like a goddamn wife. <laughs> Everybody, everything goes out the window in those moments of panic and you can't remember who your, what your wife sounds like. <laughs> who is this? I just, you know, you have to kind of talk calmly with the dog because they're going to get more excited and they'll kill themselves. <laughs> God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's kind of like a if you just don't ever want to get involved. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> so Eric and I, years ago, we saw this production of Pride and Prejudice, the Jane Austen. Uh, novel turned into uh, episodic, like, you know, 10 episodes or something. And it had um, Colin Firth was Mr. Darcy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the family of the Bennets and their oldest daughter is supposed to be the, the most beautiful one. And Eliza Bennett is the second daughter. And then there's a bunch more. And then uh, isn't Mrs. Darcy kind of yes! like the it's the Mrs. Bennett. Mrs. Bennett. Mrs. Bennett. Mrs. Bennett, the mom of the girls. <laughs> and so in the production that we love because of Jennifer Ellie plays um, Elizabeth Bennett and Colin Firth plays Darcy. And they're just so beautiful, handsome, lovely people. You want them to get together. And uh, so that works out. But the woman who plays the mother, Mrs. Bennett is... Have you heard that word a harpy or like a fury or mm -hmm. a, a female demon, you know, that you just really would rather. She, she's always like, oh, my poor nerves. Oh, my nerve. And the, the voice and the. It hit that, hits that. It hits tone that. in your ear. And it, and, and I, and I, <laughs> I, it's supposed to be, well, I didn't know it. It's supposed <clears throat> to be funny. But the way she did it was so piercing uh, and was so manipulative. You know, she makes everybody come visit her in, in the bedroom because her nerves have just, <laughs> and her daughters are like, you realize that so-and-so is really ill and we need to, you know, oh, my nerves. Well, or, oh, she'll just have to stay there and she'll, they'll fall in love with each other. <laughs> Even though her daughter is really sick. Yeah. So I hated her. I hated her because she was always in a swivet, but it was a manipulative, manipulative. <clears throat> and then we saw a different either movie or TV serial or something where the mother was much more knowing about, oh, my nerves, you know, they're just going to be. Mm, yeah. Interesting. So she was still conniving. Yeah. But she was smart. And she and her husband were witty to get, he wasn't like, oh, my God, I married this uh, crazy mm -hmm. woman who I can't stand. I want to get out of the room. You know, you know, they were more like, uh, very knowing 
about what needed to be done for the girls and how she needed to, you know, get the whole thing to work. And, and it, and I just, so her swivets were different. They weren't swivets anymore. Right. And, and I just, I, it's the same lines, maybe a different cutting of the, of the lines and the scenes, but how the interpretation of the actress and the director made a completely different impression on me of the, of the character of Mrs. Bennett. And um, interesting because it's, it's the same character from the, the book. same story. <clears throat> yeah. Jane Austen was, was satirizing the typical mom who's trying to marry oh. off the daughters and is looking right, everywhere right. for, you know, a bachelor to hand them off um, and unaware of some of the, how looking low class. Right. Oh, right, right, right. So I, I missed, I glumped them all together. Yeah, I glumped yeah, yeah. them all together. Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice, uh, Sense and Sensibility, Emma. not yeah. Emma, right? Yeah. But we read those three in high school and I just thought they were dumb, soap opera-ish. But later, you know, learning more about, uh, about sexism and yeah. economic disparity and yes. the, the desperation of it, that those, it makes those stories look very different. Yes. I didn't have that, or I didn't understand the, the background when I read them in high school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if, ugh. And that's the thing about, like, I remember watching the movie Room with a View with Helena oh, yeah. Bonham Carter and yeah. just a beautiful movie. And I didn't understand why it was a problem that she was in love with him. What's wrong, you know, until we're fine. Oh, she could marry up and he would be marrying down and that, that it was all fraught, but there wasn't a lot said, <clears throat> you know, there's- Yeah, and, and like you, like we, I didn't grow up with that yeah. background. So I, right. it just seems silly. Yeah, we don't, well, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, my only swivet was, I can't believe I have to take an exam on this book on Friday. <laughs> I can't even remember the Darcy's and the Bennett's and the. But that she wrote at a tiny desk pretending she was writing letters. Jane Austen did? Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. It, it, kind of not letting folks know what she was right. doing. Right, 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 right. Dang. Dang. All right. So, so there we go. So we have manipulative swivets versus knowing swivets versus we've completely lost control and we think there's a murderer in the house. I you still want, think it's something you put a hot pan on. A trivet, like a swiveling trivet. A, a swivet. swivet trivet. If I put a hot pan on something that's spun, I'd probably be in a flutter. We would have a swivet. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the term came from. I, <clears throat> when I was living in San Francisco, I was flying back and forth to China a lot and I'd you know, like, you, you know, with jet lag, yeah. it's brutal coming back home. And so it's like, okay, I know what works. I know what helps getting yeah. outside, exercising and sweating, things like that. But it's like the last thing I want to do after a long flight, but I made a deal with myself, just go to the gym. Mm. So my carry on bag had my gym stuff in it. And I'm like, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to put it all in my gym bag. I'm just go to the gym, just go to the gym, make yourself go. And I'm, I'm like stupid with jet lag. So in my bag has my gym stuff, but it also has my laptop, my passport and some money. Yeah. I go get a locker in the gym, change, lock my stuff up, go and work out. And I come back, open up my locker. It's all gone. All my stuff is gone. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been coming to this gym now for a couple of years. They say, don't put valuables I had a little thought I shouldn't be bringing this with me to the gym, but I knew if back in my apartment, if I took time to take everything, I'd probably just want to take a nap. Right. All stolen. And I'm like, this San Francisco is evil. This neighborhood is bad. And I'm looking around, I'm watching this guy put on his shoes. I'm like, did he do it? Did he do it? You probably know what's coming, but I was in, I was jet lagged and I was stupid and I was... So I go storming out to the 
to the front. You know, I put on enough clothes. I go out to the front desk and I'm like, Jeffrey, it's still in my things. And whoever was behind the desk, this guy was like, well, let's just, you know, let's go take a look. <laughs> so we go in. I show him the locker that's opened up. He opens the locker next to mine that had been unlocked and there's all my stuff. <laughs> I had locked the wrong, I put all my stuff in one locker and locked the one next to it. And I'm like, I love San Francisco. This is the safest gym. You could put stuff in here and not lock it. And just, it was two different cities, two different neighborhoods, two different gyms all in that moment. Wow. That is I really crazy. thought like, and also in my mind was like, Jeff, you've been taken, you, you've been too slack. You know, you, you know, you had it coming, all that stuff. Oh my gosh. And I just remember the guy just, and I just looked at him and he was nice because he could have said you idiot, but I'm sure it happened all the time. He just, well, yeah. Well, he clearly had experience. So maybe it does <laughs> Maybe I was not the first one, but it's so, it's so, I was, and I really was thinking like, who is it? Which one of you thieves did right. it? And Absolutely. you can, I could tell that one was dodgy looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's almost like, you know, the, um, the us story, there's one side, one truth, one world oh, versus yes. other world, mm -hmm. yeah, the same thing. The same. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, remember that scene in us awesome <laughs> when they're they're showing signs or scenes that are happening above ground, like those people on that fake roller coaster and pretending like they were going through all these things. Oh, I don't. Oh, you I, don't remember? I, I blocked out a lot of. It was toward the end. It was. It's just because we've watched something recently with Elizabeth Moss, and so um, what did we watch? Is it but the anyway, top of the lake or whatever. No, it was something much more. We weren't watching so much TV. Um, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. But we wanted, you know, because she's an interesting actor. So we wanted yeah. to see some other. And so he said, remember, she was in us. And I said, I don't remember anything about us, except you didn't remember she was in it. No, yeah. didn't remember there were any white people in it. Did all of <laughs> I did not. You see, just like they had that Siri or Alexa, whatever the name it was. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, call the police. Yes. And, and then and then they play fuck the police. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Like she can't get police help. Yeah. Help. Ooh. Thank you for sharing your swivets with me today, my friend. Thank you for swiveting with me. Listen for the click on your phone in your house. Oh, 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 oh. I, said, I'm, I really don't miss landlines. Do not miss them.